Hello there, and welcome to the premiere of a new show here on Table Story, Cura. It's an uplifting tale about a world on the brink of desolation. For anyone feeling greedy like tonight's episode isn't enough Cura for you, you're in luck. Three additional prologue episodes are available for our members on our merch store, as well as all this brand new Cura gear. Just head over to merch.tablestory.tv. Don't worry, the prologue episodes are not required viewing for the show. It's just additional content of us workshopping through the characters, setting stuff up for the show, and me preparing to run the official campaign. With that being said, thank you so much for supporting Table Story throughout the years. And without further ado, let's get on with episode one of Cura. Please enjoy. Since his arrival, my brother has effortlessly swept death across this world. At the borders of a land unreachable during winter, as spring thaws winter's icy grip, it opens nature's gateway and invites annihilation. In the dead of night, only hours before the sun will rise on the village of Moon, the war bells toll for the first time in over a century. Distant sounds of battle as sword and axe strike bone and sinew. The snow still thick across the landscape even at the start of summer and the sudden rush of motion as the Goliath villagers rush from their beds to the doors of their huts and longhouses. Cyrus stirs from her bed. You're at the Shrine Grounds, Cyrus, which is where you and the other clerics stay, and have stayed for some time. And there's several other people around you that are rushing to get from their beds and move. Uh, several of them are wrapping themselves in furs and wraps and armor. This is something that I don't think you will have experienced even in the long time you've been here. There is a woman, Amleth, a Goliath woman that sleeps beside you, and she speaks to you suddenly. Where is Thors? I... I... I don't know. What is happening? I don't know, but ready yourself. What do you do? I immediately uh, reach under my mattress for my sword and begin buckling it, um, and I prepare for battle. We move now to the communal longhouse where Sia and Jildan open the doors to their rooms. The longhouse itself is in absolute chaos. There are wide doors at the end of the longhouse as several Goliaths rush in and several rush out. The children are being ushered in by the winter hearth, which is sparkling with starlight shards. A Goliath watchman, who I don't think either of you would recognize, covered in very thick boiled leather armor, shouts to the crowd, If you can fight, then fight. We are under attack. Creatures of the night swarm from the south. Go, go. Ushering people out of the door, he moves away from you and rushes out with them. Uh, Seer and Jildan, what are you two doing in response to this? Binko! Binko! Where are you going? 
who's going to soak my feet? Where's it? Bring him back here! For goodness sake! Ugh. What are they doing? Why are they all rushing around everywhere? I can't even see! I'm not too sure, but whatever it is, it's quite a din. We have to go now. Well, where are we going to go? It's, it's awfully busy. To where the noise is coming from. Uh, we else? have to. Uh, we can stay here, old woman. Why not? Uh, perfect, because I haven't finished my crossword yet. If you don't mind. Thank you. I am looking for seven letter words for the ethereal guardian beasts. They're protectors of the ancient tomes. Any idea? A seven letter word for an ethereal guardian beast. Yes, it starts with an S, I think. S. S. Yes. We don't have time for this. Oh, it's Seraphim, obviously. Seraphim. Yes, yes. All right. Well, that was the last one. That was the last one. Fine. Come on. Go we'll see what the commotion's all about. Inkle! Uh, Inkle! At Hard's Magical Tower, north of the village, there is a sudden sharp ringing in Thrax's ears. And I think we see you sit up in your humble bed. It is very uh, early in the morning. It is like 3, 4 a.m. Um, as you sit up, ahead of you, floating magically in the air, is a single sheet of paper. As he grasps it, the ink appears to write across the page. Find your group quickly. It is time. What do you do? Well, I was prepared for this, so... I... Gather my things quickly, they were waiting next to the door. Uh, some components, things like that. Put on my gear, grab my staff, my spell book, and I head out the tower towards town. As we follow Thrak rushing out of the tower, down the steps, and out into the snow-covered landscape, um, you can see that the fires around town are lit. Um, the sounds of chaos increase as you move closer. The town is absolute madness. The Goliaths are in a fervor as many rush to equip armor and weapons. Most appear to be moving swiftly towards the south and towards the sounds of the, um, the fighting. You catch sight of Seer and Jildan at the Longhouse and moving down behind the Longhouse from the hillside is Cirrus. The four of you are able to meet up. <laughs> Where have you been, anyway? I needed your hair earlier. What's going on? Now is not the time for foot massages. It's always the time for foot massages. What do you mean? I believe it has begun. Ragnarok. Your prophecy. Wait, you yes. said that was a dream. It what was a vision, and I was not sure if it was real, but I think, I think it might be. Wait, so where's the smart one? Uh, Cirrus, what is Ragnarok again? Uh, do I know of Ragnarok in my studies? Give me a religion check. First official roll, a bloody 20. A not, not a natural 20. Um, a bloody one. But a, but a bloody <laughs> one, a, a dirty 20. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, you would know um, that Ragnarok is the word that the Goliaths use here in the, in the north, um, in Moon specifically. The um, clerics and the individuals of your uh, religion up here um, understand Ragnarok to be the end of the world. It is a, uh, a climactic battle amongst several of the gods. Um, though there are a lot of things that are said to come to pass before Ragnarok actually begins. A sort of endless winter. Um, there's supposedly supposed to be 
these enormous beasts that fight and chase uh, destroying the sun and the moon there are supposed to be valkyries that fly and engage um, with the uh, the giants um, none of these things seem to have come to pass um, for one thing it's summer uh, and for the majority of the time that you've been here it has been winter the um, the ice of the lake uh, completely frozen over whereas you know for the last week or so the ice of the lake has actually been thawing out um, so this sort of endless winter these crazy battles between the gods and stuff doesn't seem to have really happened um, that is how the Goliaths understand the end of the world and what Ragnarok uh, is supposed to be um, however um, Thrak you uh, have probably been banging on about this for the last few months um, after witnessing in a dream that the end of the world is happening um, so yes to, to answer your um, to your question you would know generally what Ragnarok is it's a very similar understanding to what the current you know real world Norse mythology version of Ragnarok is um, yeah. that these guys believe in uh, with a few tweets here and there of course Okay. The signs aren't there. The signs weren't there. The signs? Hmm. Like then maybe it's a Ragnarok, not the Ragnarok, perhaps. Regardless, we must fight. Are you ready? If I must. So I have to. There's an awful lot of empty places over there. There's some good food on the table. Could just go and sit down for a while and just let them all hash uh, it out. I don't know. Um, no. We fight. <laughs> Fine. <sighs> Rock. Yes. What are we to expect? Fire. Blood. And death. Blood. Oh, what? Right. Why didn't you say so? Come on, then. I start limbering up. Yes. Yes. Just to be sure, I am still apathetic about this, but I suppose I'll follow anyway. I've got nothing better doing. And I pull up my staff and I follow. Okay. Where are you each heading? Um, I would begin walking in the direction of the loudest part of the battle. So where everyone is running. Uh, I would be going there. Yeah. Um, south is the answer. Everyone seems to be moving south unless, you know, you can see our elderly people and children um, moving away from the south if anyone lives that way um, and actually heading towards the longhouse that you're moving away from. Um, you uh, each sort of move uh, briskly towards the south. The closer you get you can see that there are like pockets of fighting there are lots of goliaths involved not just the watch but um just townsfolk that have taken up arms and rushed into the fray um as you move towards the south you come into view of the south watchtower it is a site of complete madness there are creatures swarming the area these sort of icy stairs and jagged movements these are creatures that you would recognize as undead um, there are animals in amongst these undead wolves, screeching birds uh, squirrels, rabbits there's even a goat that runs past um, rabidly running at people and biting uh, rather than trying to use its horns just kind of chaos These are there's a huge amount of undead creatures here the main threat seems to come from um, not the animals though but a set of humanoid figures of a species that nobody here would recognize they have great big jaws filled with rows of teeth 
animalistic eyes and those that still have skin uh, have it covered in scales. These are lizard folk as far as sort of anyone else uh, would be aware but you guys um, there is no such thing. In this world there's no lizard folk. This isn't a you know like oh these are guys from some area of the world. No one's ever seen anything like this before. Um, but to all the rest of us we would recognize them as these sort of small lizards. They're, they're, there is normal lizards, there are alligators, there are even dragons, but not humanoid creatures that are wielding weapons and armor and shields like these are. Most of them are sort of frozen. Um, they seem to be sort of white and covered in snow, skin missing in, in places, bones um, uh, showing. Some of them are outright skeletal, being held together by whatever undead uh, magic holds together a, a skeleton. Um, these lizard folk are quite small and thin rather than like muscular big creatures. They're sort of similar to a velociraptor for our mind's eye and they're fighting with goliaths across the entire southern range from the mountain tower at the east all the way along to the lake itself. Currently the lake flows because it is after all summer even in the frozen area here in the north. Um, the four of you would recognize Oswald, the leader of the watch and uh, a group of his warriors fighting to the east by the tower itself. There's a ferocity to his eyes as he swings his enormous weapon into the skull of a lizard man, destroying the undead threat. He turns, locks eyes with your group, and then he shouts at you. But, across the chaos, you cannot make out a word. We are going to immediately roll finish it. <laughs> I think uh, he's saying those poor turtles have lost their shells. And I'm going to bring you guys down to here. So, you can start anywhere in this uh, sort of dark square. Place yourselves wherever you want to be. Um, and for those of us looking, this is the sort of idea of the area here. Uh, as the group rush towards the eastern tower and a lot of uh, undead creatures are about. Oswald and another Goliath are fighting just ahead of you. And uh, let me get this turn order up for us as well as we steamroll into battle immediately. All right, as long as that's where you want to start. I rolled a one. Oh, wow, really? For a total of five. Two <laughs> We're off to a Two great start. Ones. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, who am I missing? Brack? Uh, Did you roll one? You've got to click your token. I'm, I'm on a uh, turn order for myself. Uh, it was 19. Oh, no, you are there. Sorry, it was Sia. Sorry, right, yes. I had to just make it again. Okay. Here we go. Uh, all right. Let me just put the other two fellows. So, for the purposes of this uh, combat here, all of these guys in the background are essentially like, you know, like when you used to play Street Fighter and they would just be like a bunch of 2D guys cheering in the background? That's what's happening here. The immediate threat are the ones that are around Oswald and the other uh, Goliath ahead of you. Okay. First up is Thrak. What do you do? Uh, I will uh, I'll cast Let's see I think um, I'm a bit far off so I'll move up about 15 feet and uh I will cast. Uh, I'll just do a firebolt. So I raise my staff and uh, read from my spell book and um, a little uh, firebolt will leave and I'm going to be attacking the uh, this fellow here closest. 
I'll give uh -huh. them colors. We'll call that guy Red Lizard. Yes, Blue Lizard. Red Lizard is getting fireball, dude. Green Lizard, what a classic. And an Orange Lizard. Mm -hmm. So fire coalesces at the uh, end of my staff as I raise it above my head. And it um, sort of shoots out at them. An 11 is a miss. What happened? Oh, I think it just... Uh, maybe there's a snowdrift near him. And he's dodging around in battle. And uh, it just hits the, hits the snowdrift. Yeah. Melts away some snow. But yeah, a burst of sort it. of water uh, and steam in the air. Okay. Um, end of your turn? Yeah, that's the end of my turn. All right, Jilden. I finish limbering up and slowly place my staff on the ground in front of me. And then I bonus action wild shape into a dire wolf. Okay. And with my 50 feet of movement, I'm going to jump straight over to this lizard folk. And I'm going to bite him. Um, I also have pack tactics, which means uh, advantage on attack roll. If an ally is within five foot, which it is. So. That is uh, correct. You become a full-blown direwolf, right? Like, I can just give you access to a direwolf, and you can roll from that, if that would make your life easier. If I, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me... Uh... Let me make your life harder for a minute. <laughs> no, I, I'm incredibly aware, and everyone watching and listening uh, should be aware that this is how uh i expect every single druid to be <laughs> uh, a pain in the ass <laughs> that's the way it goes yeah okay uh there is a dire wolf let me quickly give you access to it Hell yes sunny this represent your hp so that we can you get the hp right it's been a long time since i've gm for a uh yes a, i believe uh, i got a druid um Apart from our session zeros in which you didn't do any sort of transformations and stuff. So. <laughs> um, I'm not sure any of us has ever seen you transform. No, I don't think so. This is the first time. Well, I spent a long time relaxing and I feel just about ready now, I think. Okay. That now, she didn't she know Grandma could do that. this. <laughs> You should have, and what I'll do is I'll just put them in the character sheet section. You should have access to the direwolf there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so now, right. And let me know if you have problems with uh, oh. how to use the Terrible direwolf. rolls, but that's uh, 13 to hit. All right. Uh, 13 to hit. Hits. Uh, nice. Yes. And it must do a strength saving throw to see if it's knocked prone. Okay. Here's the strength saving throw. Natural one from me. So that's 10 piercing damage and it's knocked prone. Nice. Yeah, I think, yeah, you sort of just attack this. You just tra running forward, you transform into this um, horrific, gigantic wolf, grabbing at this sort of small velociraptor looking lizard folk with a little uh, club in its hand. And then, yeah, you just wrench it down to the ground. I'd say you probably just pull off one of its legs, if I'm honest. And I still sound here. like Jilden, so from this giant die wolf, it just... Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, cool, alright. It is the zombie lizard folks' turns um, as they are going to try and uh, hit. Uh, I guess the first one, the one that's on the ground that's prone, is going to remain prone, but he is going to try and hit you with this heavy club. Um... Does attacking from prone give me disadvantage? I don't think it does. So that's a 21 against whatever your AC is as a dire wolf. Yes, yes, that will hit. All right, you take three bludgeoning damage. Oh, oh yeah, little bastard. Yeah. Uh, the other one is going to try and hit uh, Oswald on a 20. It actually does hit him. It's going to deal three bludgeoning damage to him. Oswald gets hit by this thing as he, t he sort of turns around and sees a dire wolf running at him, and for a moment he's, like, confused. Um... He's a very large um, Goliath, is Oswald. He is a he's a big boy, and uh, here's some artwork to remind ourselves of sort of an idea of what this guy is. He is the quintessential, absolutely massive brick shit house Goliath. Um, 
probably the strongest, biggest Goliath in town. Uh, and this little tiny club from this sort of skeletal um, lizard folk it does nothing to him. He just sort of shrugs it off, um, ignoring the direwolf tearing at the lizard folk behind him. He turns as if to attack you. There's a second Goliath next to him who is going to take a couple of hits as well here. An 18 as the uh, another three. Uh, it's a lot of threes. I feel like PB's uh, screaming right now. Um... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's, it's same kind of thing. This Goliath's a little smaller, but he is a member of the Watch. Um, as he takes uh, a bit of damage here. It's his turn. He's going to res respond by striking sort of chaotically at the, um, the same lizard folk there. He's going to miss. He sort of gets hit by one lizard folk, hit by another. He swings. The little creature ducks underneath it, snapping wildly with its sort of skeletal jaws, flesh and scales hanging off. Uh, and uh, then it is Seer's turn. I guess it's time to earn our keep. I uh, run my maximum speed, which I believe is 40, uh, off kilter in, I want to say... Uh, this direction, that's 40, not close enough to get into combat. Uh, and this turn, I'm going to reach into my pocket and uh, throw a, uh, a purple dart from my hip towards this zombie lizard man that is engaged with Jilden right now. Okay. It is prone, so you have disadvantage. It is prone. Yes. Okay. I will let you control Z that. I will, okay, I'll attack the other one that's uh, just past her instead. Okay. With uh, with the same dart. Am I giving with an a 19 to hit? GM. That hits. Uh, six points of piercing damage. Okay, and that was at the blue one, yeah. Yes. Yeah, this the, this sort of dart you sort of sling it underhand. It launches over the direwolf, which is sort of still dragging around this lizard folk on the ground, um, with the the sort of old turtle voice of Jildan coming out of it. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, the dart, like, strikes this, uh, this lizard folk. What it does, however, is it hits the lizard folk and just goes straight through it, tearing sort of flesh um, off of the skeleton of this thing, breaking a few bones, and then sort of clattering out of the other side of it, leaving a, a pretty large wound. The, the, you get the sense that these creatures, maybe it's the snow or the undeath, um, they're quite fragile uh, as this thing um, breaks through. That would be my turn for now. Okay. Uh, Oswald is going to uh, swing his uh, longsword here. Uh, now he is going to do it two-handed as he attacks one of these guys on a 23. I think what he does is just obliterate the one that, that you just struck. Um, you see the lizard um, taken aback as the, as the force of the dart hits it. It kind of stumbles a little bit, and then it's bifurcated by Oswald's uh, enormous stature with this huge longsword that he brings down. And you see the skeleton of this thing kind of break away from some of the flesh um, as it collapses, and the, the magic uh, drains out of it. Um, okay. It is Cirrus's turn. Yes, um... Okay, I am going to run forward um, about here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, cast Sacred Flame on the orange one. Okay, that is a deck save from me, I believe. Yeah. Yes. A 17, look at that. Ooh. Oh, he dances okay. away from the uh, sacred flame, um, so I think it just misses, right? He just avoids it. What does it look yeah. like, though? I'm curious about how this looks to everyone else, even though this thing sort of like deftly dances away from whatever the result is. Um, yeah, I reach out a hand, and in the place where it was standing, uh, a pure white radiance just kind of flashes in the spot like a like a big photo flash almost um 
leaving a, a small crater where in the snow where it was. Okay. Uh, you have a bonus action if you want to do something else. Um. Yeah, I would like to cast Shield of Faith on the rack, actually. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Thrak, you have a plus two AC um, for ten minutes. There's a concentration spell. So if you take any sort of damage, you have to make a save to keep that spell going. Yep. All right, Thrak, your turn. Top of the round. Right. Um, I'm going to uh, reach into my pouch, my component's pouch, and I will take out a small... Uh, shard of glass I will throw it up in the air and as I raise my staff it suspends itself there I read through my spell book and I cast um, a cloud of daggers uh, and I would like it to be uh, right there alright this time I'm prepared We'll prepare think, this time. I think this is the correct uh, size. Yes, it is. Uh, okay. So, you should be able to move that. Wherever you oh, want I can go. move it? Okay. Excellent. Yep. All right, so I'll put it right. Uh, I think it's five feet in every direction. So, it's one bigger. Five feet in every direction makes that one bigger. I'm going to trust you. Up to Wax Steven to tell me whether. Uh, Alright, so I cast a Cloud of Dagger. Yeah, um, I'm assuming this is sort of does what it says on the tin. There's just an, uh, a huge amount of swirling daggers that are magically appear and start cutting everything uh, in place. Does it immediately start doing damage or is it when it starts the turn? Yeah. So uh, a creature takes uh, 4d4 slashing damage when it enters the spell's area for the first time, or on a turn it starts its turn there. Okay, then uh, go ahead and give me 4d4. Oh, okay, could have been better. Enough the to kill most them both. average roll. <laughs> it's the most average roll with a nine, but it's enough <laughs> to kill them both. Uh, what does it do? How does it? How does it look? Uh, yeah, there are um, many different types of daggers. Uh, some without hilt, some with uh, different coloured wraps on some of them. Um, they're all swirling around uh, these creatures, and I think as they realise they're in danger they look up and uh, make their little lizard folk noises but it's too late as these daggers tear through their undead flesh going right through their body as if it, they were paper and eventually it's just too much for them and uh, they scream in, in uh, frustration as they fall to the ground uh, leaking out um, sort of congealed dark undead blood Okay, nice. Uh, Jilden. Um, hit. Another bite. And as I'm like worrying away at this thing, I'm almost, it's like a exultation. Like I look so thrilled <laughs> to be fighting into this thing. Uh, so 15. Uh, yep, that hits. This thing is nice. on the ground as I assume you just continue to like drag it around. Uh, you destroy Playing it. Playing with my food almost. Just yeah, like, like when a dog gets like there. a little toy oh, yeah. and you just like shake your <laughs> enormous <laughs> direwolf head, ripping this thing apart. And again, as the magic sort of unwields from these creatures, you see them sort of fall apart, like as if this was a very old corpse, you know, and it's just sort of like the, the magic was holding some of the bones and the parts of this creature together. And once you shake the life out of it, literally, or the undeath out of it, it uh, sort of falls apart. And the uh, the Lego uh, uh, noise plays as the, the bones <laughs> clatter to the ground. Um, Oswald uh, sees you guys um, uh, 
and catches your eye. He he makes a, a quick glance around him, sort of a quick battlefield surveillance um, as he sees all of his Goliath, the, the watchmen, the people of the town. And you see them all rushing in, fighting with more of these lizard folk, fighting with creatures. Um, and uh, it, there's an element to this where it's quite difficult to see. It is nighttime, but there are fires lit um, all across the town, including in the, the tower that sits above you. Um, and uh, we, we're sort of without even missing a beat. I think as soon as you shake this last thing dead, he glances at the battlefield and shouts back to you. My grandmother, Brina, set in place an emergency wall should something like this happen. Though, I am not sure she expected something exactly like this. Travel to the peak. Above us, there. Pull the lever. It will bring down part of the mountain in a controlled fall. It will roll across the land and create a wall. Maybe the only way to keep them at bay. If nothing else, it will slow them down. Go now. The entrance is in the caverns. Through the tower. He sort of turns away from you and is already marching towards the battle. Just follow the cavern up. Go. Now. I don't know. Tell me what to do. We'll be done. Uh... Come. I begin running, uh, run to where he told us to go. Yeah. The, um, the tower is, uh, a watchtower. It's extremely tall. It, it, it's sort of extremely, so it's maybe like 40 feet tall. Um, uh, but as soon as you, like, the door is wide open to this thing. The watch have already left. There is no, there's not a single Goliath left in the tower. It's completely empty. It may be the first time you guys have ever been into this, um, tower. The, the lower um, floor of this circular building is uh, pretty much just a set of tables, um, as if this is their sort of um, their uh, mess area, the mess hall. Uh, there are three doors, uh, two of which um, are open and clearly lead uh, upwards. There are sets of stairs that uh, are at the back of this tower, and then there's a third locked door which is on the eastern wall beside of the actual cavern. Which uh, door do you take? I think at this oh. point I'm still following Cirrus, so I'm waiting for her to decide since she's been here the longest. Um, do I happen to know uh, which which place will get me to the cavern directly? The eastern side, right? It seems very likely it would be the eastern door. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then I, I head there immediately. Um, yeah. Yeah, you go to open it. the door, um, and for a moment you think it might be locked. Um, but you yeah. recognize that actually it's just probably not been opened in a huge amount of time. Uh, yet it still doesn't quite open. Ooh. Um, can I put I all of my weight into it? I will into it full oh. speed. Okay. All right. I take a I'm step still back. a direwolf. Oh, you're still a oh. dire wolf. Yeah, You've give been me, given no warning. Yeah, give me an athletics <laughs> check, oh. which on the sheet might just be a strength check. Uh, I don't know. Some, so they sometimes have skills listed underneath that you can... Uh, that you can uh, yeah, so no, just, just strength. Just click on the word strength, STI. Oh, 11. <laughs> An 11. You rush at this door and... <laughs> you actually see the door um, open uh, a ways. Like, it, it pushes open like four or five inches. Uh, it sort of breaks the this seal that is that has been holding this door in place you then you sort of recognize that the door itself is the the wood of this door is sort of expanded into place um which is what is really causing it to remain completely stiff but you're gonna have to give it another bash whoever wants to attempt that can give me another athletics check i, I walk would. away drunkenly oh. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll, I'll do it <laughs> um athletics check yeah here we go Oh, great. How does this look? Because it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I I, uh, I see the effect that the dire wolf just had, and I'm feeling optimistic with how much it opened, so I, I just sort of elbow it. I'm not really taking into it too much, um, and I am so embarrassed when it fails. Uh, okay. Um... 
I look left and right, and I walk towards the door. I take my staff, and I place it by the base of the door, and it leans on the wall on the other side. I'm going to push down and lift myself up and then kick the door with both legs and see what happens. Uh, yeah, for the sake of using the staff, I'll let you do this as, a, an, athle- as a, an athletics or an acrobatics check, since you're a monk. Okay. 12 with a plus 6. Yeah, it's just enough. Yeah, you sort of um, managed to crowbar this door open. It, it, it isn't pretty. It isn't like a, an impressive flourish at all. No. Um, but, you know, with a, with a, a kick and, and the sort of softening up of the door from the direwolf, the door um, pushes open. It, again, it doesn't open all the way, but it's enough for all of you to be able to move past it and move into the caverns beyond. Um, and I, assuming you all do that, you squeeze through yeah. this doorway and into the um, the cave here. And it, it isn't at first sort of a natural cave. It is actually more like uh, a mine shaft or something like that as you guys start moving in and away from the, um, the tower, the uh, twists and turns of this cavern continue for quite a while. And you're able to follow wooden steps and supports that indicate the route. Um, however, after a few minutes of, of climbing and moving and rushing, um, the tunnel eventually sort of loses its way to disrepair as if no one has traveled this route in a very long time. Um, it gets very dark in here. I know three of you have dark vision and one might do while being a direwolf. I'm not sure, but I'll give you sort, sort of a- pres- I don't think so. Okay, well, I'll give you a smell ability that you're able to- I can smell, yeah. Smell you can smell sight. I do have keen smell, but can I fit is the question. Do I actually fit down these tunnels? Yeah, you're you're big, but you're no wider than um, a Goliath. And these are tunnels that the Goliath use. So in every, almost every time I ever mention a door or a, you know, a building or something, always assume that it's slightly bigger than what you sort of have in your mind's eye. Because these, these are Goliath structures. So for the most part, they build everything to their own size. So... Um, yeah, cool. you're able to fit through these tunnels. They're not, it's not incredibly narrow, though it does shift and change. The, the more it becomes a natural cavern, um, but uh, I don't think you have any problem maneuvering through it. But we'll say that you're kind of following with a sense of smell, maybe, as you follow the rest of the pack here. Um, there are openings and crawlways all about you. There are sounds of fighting echoing off the walls for a time until eventually they're just suffocated by the mountain above and around you the sort of chaos of the night um and the adrenaline and the madness that you've moved away from uh calm for a moment but also lend a sense of pressure to sort of navigating through these tunnels um you're generally continuing upwards but there are so many offshoots that start to branch off from this you get the sense that sometime a very very long time ago this place was probably mined and these are the sort of old uh, mining tunnels and caverns that they used um however it becomes just a complete crosshatch of um tunnels and crawlways and varying uh places that you might be able to go um if everyone could make me a survival check uh, to navigate the tunnels correctly or not. And uh, Direwolf, you only take the first three stats from Direwolf, so strength, uh, dex, and con. And then for anything else, like a charisma based check or a wisdom check, I think you take them from your sheet. Yes, that unless it's perception, of... okay, which yeah. relies on hearing or smell. Yeah. But yes, survival. Okay, I'm glad you know. Don't worry about me. Okay, great, great, because <laughs> it's been literally about five years since I GM. I've time. never played a druid before. <laughs> I, know, you were right. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely going to get it wrong, and I'm sure someone. Oh will yeah, hundred percent. Uh, that's twenty-four for me. All right, twenty-four. Um, Thrak got a natural one, or, or you know, four. Um, Seer with the five, Cirrus with an eight. I think at one point here, the three of you that can see very well begin to disagree on which way to go. Um, I think that there are like four or five openings in front of you and you, there's a moment where you all kind of have to pause because all of the possible ways that this could go, all of them seem to lead on a slight incline upwards. So you're able to move 
up them and it would technically be moving upwards but which one is the sort of correct um route to the precipice that you're aiming for um i think brings you to a stop and maybe you start to sort of quietly disagree or bicker i don't think at this point you're able to tell which way is which you've been turning and climbing and moving for so long that i don't think you really know which way is east west you know um Jilden, however straight away <laughs> i'm gonna say that because you do have that that sense of smell um or maybe a sort of a heightened sense of uh um something here uh, you can sense and maybe smell the um that one of these specific tunnels um will lead you up to an area where you can smell it's more of i think what you would get is more of a smell of like iron and like man-made things rather than um you know anything d uh, definitive but the rest of the tunnels just smell like any other cave and, and shaft here whereas one of them clearly has a sense of like iron you know that kind of like weird iron blood smell so i think you can probably determine that how this transpires i don't know as the three of you start to bicker and then a wolf starts speaking <laughs> <laughs> i i will throw up a small package of bones that i've obviously tried to eat from whatever those creatures are and, <coughs> and then um smells like Blood. Smells delicious, and I just walk off on my own. I don't even care which the way out is. That smells delicious to me. I'll never get used to that. <laughs> and I just follow trepidatiously behind. God's above, and I follow along with them. <laughs> I am not surprised at all, and I also follow them. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think you will follow the wolf. Um, and there's a there's a few turns again before you um, navigate around a uh, a turning here through a couple more caverns, and then you start to notice structure again, um, old mining shaft supports uh, that lead you to the cavern exit. However, the exit is uh, blocked. There is a huge iron door which is chained and locked shut. The frame is built deep into the stone of the cavern and the lock is a circular mechanism with eight symbols on it. You, um, you can turn the lock in uh, a circle. like it, it sort of would look to our eye like a combination lock on a safe. Um, at the center of the lock is an arrow indicating which point to turn the lock to. Um, and above... Uh, the lock itself are some scratched um, uh, arrows pointing left, uh, then right, then left once more. What that looks like for you guys is this. Uh, again, on the right, you'll see the scratched arrows and also some uh, writing. Now, that is written in... Uh, Goliath or giantish, um, and quite old script. Giantish. Does anyone speak giantish? I do. I think yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, if you want to read that out, you can. Protected by Boreal's right, giants of stone and mountain might. Who are these in strength and grace? Um, Guardians of the northmost place. Is this another crossword? I can't see. It's not a crossword. Um, protected by Voriel's right. Stone and mountain. Guardians. Golems. Where? No, not guardians. It's asking for guardians space. of Voriel. That's... You know more about this than any of us, Cyrus. Yes, Voriel is... Our angel. The mountain. Um, our is a bit strong, but... Yes. It's got nothing on our nails. Apologies, my... Mine. Northmost... He has protected you the entire time you've lived here, so... 
That's right. Um. Okay. If you insist. I do. Because I like truth, I guess. <laughs> There's a rune here. Uh, I point to the rune that is taking a spot where numbers normally do. I recognize that rune. Uh, the one where numbers normally do. Wait, which? <laughs> it's right above the key. It's like um. Uh, the fist. Oh, the one that's on yeah. the uh, on there. Uh, you yeah. can give me, I guess, an investigation check or um, or religion check, or if you want to justify another one, you mm, can. I can do religion. Not entirely sure how a mountain for an angel is protecting me, but that's besides the Maybe. point. Uh, eight. Um, this is either the symbol for uh, protection or necessity. Ooh. I'm giving that to you because this, the DC is yeah. you're under it, but you're close. Right. I mean, in this place, protection and necessity are are the same thing. The angel's protection is what allows us to live here. Otherwise, we'd all freeze and die. Very well. Right. Oh. Uh, is there a way that we would know anything about, like, mythical animals or creatures that might be considered guardians? Um, yeah, I mean, you can make me, I guess, um, I guess that would be an investigation check as well from you, Thray. Okay. And do you mean, just to be, um, specific, do you mean mythical protective creatures of the surrounding area here or in general? Uh, I would say around, around here. Eleven. Um, there isn't a there isn't a an animal that comes to mind that is sort of very obviously um, an animal that the Goliaths here revere as a protection animal. Um, you get the sense that maybe you glanced over something at some point in your time since you moved here. Um, at one point, that there was some sort of element of a, a protective creature or something like that um but in general the goliaths here don't seem to revere any real animals as as protective um of the area at least not over one another there are a few creatures around um you've encountered things like the quagoth which are very um dangerous and protective of their own thing there are yeti around um but they don't consider them to be sort of protective animals so in Perhaps. short no but you're not sure if you you know are just uneducated on that i don't okay. suppose it's gonna be a seven letter word is it hey seven letters yeah uh, yes maybe it's nanimbosa never mind right I mean, guardians of the northmost place would be Voreal itself, right? Guardians of Voreal? Well, we all know what Voreal is, right? Their nature. Mm. So, obviously, I suppose, you know, what is guarding the mountain. But I'm looking at this and these dials and nothing looks like a mountain's guardian to me. Just the mountain itself. 
The snow guard a mountain by covering it, perhaps? You see this image right here? The three. The three? The tri. Hmm. I point to the tri Ketra, but I don't I don't know what it's that. called. No, uh, right here. Oh, right, yes. Um... The answer be three. Hmm. Shall we try the mountain first, just to see what happens? I, I don't even know back. what you're looking at. I'm assuming it's still dark, and I can't see a single. Jill, did you have a torch in your pouch? No. Do I look like I have hands to use a torch? <laughs> <laughs> you see me quickly reach into my pouch and strike the uh, torch against her, let her furry back. And how do you fire. expect that to work? Oh, Jesus Christ, how did that work? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, you're allowed to say Jesus Christ in all of my campaigns. What that is. <laughs> What, what that is, is the universal translator that is being used on Table Story, <laughs> as you, you said, some other deified mm -hmm. thing uh, in the uh, world. Elnaeus is grace. So how did yeah, that work? That's what it sounded like in the actual situation. Uh, but you're always allowed to say, exclaim, because I do it as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, like, I will... Um, uh, I will... Uh, state that for, for all intents and purposes this is a safe lock um with the arrows pointing left left right i think i said left right left and i mean left left right uh, before we, ah. we we play with the dial i would like to look around and check for traps if possible a great idea give me an investigation check or you know what i'll give you a perception check for this as well if you want okay then in that case i shall use a perception check 21. Ooh. This is absolutely not trapped. Um, yeah, this is just uh, a door with a lock on it, presumably just to keep out creatures or, you know, any none to do wells, you know, street toughs. Um, but yeah, th there doesn't seem to be any sort of dangerous trap or uh, anything. You just simply have to get the lock unlocked mm. and then you're, you know, you'll gain I, access. I turn to Cirrus and I say, if I was a betting man, I'd say that. Well, that plaque next to that uh, symbol you talked about is likely the password. Right. Okay. And I uh, move the dial according to the pattern that is here. So left, 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 right. Uh, to which symbols? Oh, um... <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will say this as well. Now, usually, because this is a milestone XP game, usually I will let people sacrifice XP for hints. Um, mm -hmm. In this uh, game, there's two ways that you can gain hints. Um, right. To get a direct hint from me, it will cost one of you one HP permanently. You reduce your HP by one and you get a hint from me. Okay. Um, alternatively, you uh, can um, activate chat, like phone a friend or, <laughs> or, or, or friend. Like, whatever it was called in Millionaire where you would get the uh, <laughs> yeah. poll, poll the chat. You take chat out of emo only mode uh, and that will cost you one difficulty of whatever the next um thing you do is will be at disadvantage okay and it isn't just something where you go you can't you can't game that it will be i will imp i will impose disadvantage on the next important thing you do <laughs> rather than you go oh i would like to play hopscotch can i make a that acrobatics check for all of us or just one uh all of you will have one round basically you'll have one round of disadvantage not all of us lose one hp just one no. person we choose yeah 
Right. So you can okay. you can designate one of you to lose one HP. Right, or so do you then go you ahead and lose an HP, I say? Or or basically <laughs> you have a luck curse on you. Um and that's how you right. get two possible hints. Okay. Um before choosing to u utilize either of those things, um I propose to all of you uh that perhaps it could be left to the key, left to the mountain, right to the key. But okay. that would be just a guess. Better than nothing. It's not trapped, so we can try as many times as we want. Right. All right. Um, that's what I'm going to do then. Uh, right to the key, left to the mountain, right back to the key. I think you mean left to the key, left to the mountain. Right, left to the key, right left to the mountain, yeah. right back to the key. Key, mountain. mountain. You know what? I'll just let you do that from now on. Ma key, mountain. Uh, and then what was the last one, sorry? Key. Key. Uh, it rattles, uh, but doesn't seem to come unlocked. Okay. Uh, I put it back into its original position um, so that we can keep track of the left, right, left, lefts. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh. Who are these in strength and grace? Guardians of the northmost place. Are there any, um, would I know of any tales or, uh, folk, folk stories that the Goliaths would have told of guardians of Voreal or, um, stone creatures or things like that? Uh, very possibly. You can give me, um... I guess a religion check, or I think I, uh, I guess a history check would be okay as well. Okay. Oh, I think I'll go with history. You're also free to like argue me on any of those things if there's something that you're like, oh, would this work because oh. of this? You know, you can't be like, well, an athletics yeah. check would work here, but you know, don't. Yeah. Uh, history 20. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, yes. Uh, the answer is the Goliaths themselves. They revere yeah. themselves as the protectors of, of Voreal and, you know, the, the town. Yeah. Um, so most of their stories revolve around uh, tales of heroism or, you know, which uh, group of Goliaths did this to protect this, What who built what, um... It's similar to how Oswald is known as the sort of like survival master um, and is the biggest and strongest. He's sort of just revered on that alone because he's the head of the watch. Um, so, yeah, generally, I think that it would sort of click with you that, that this is probably just referencing the Goliaths themselves. Okay. Uh, yeah, I repeat that back to everyone. Um... I turn to Cirrus and I say, is there any significance with this creature on the lock with these people? Um... Is Would there any significance with that? I mean, it looks like a lion to me, Murgles, but uh, would there be a symbol that I would be able to uh, relate it to? Um... Here? Yeah, you can give me another history check. Um, okay. And I'll and I'll see if uh, that justifies. Pretty 17. good again, seventeen, killing it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't think you've ever heard of any. Uh, you've probably never even heard of Goliath mention a lion. Um, yeah. I don't think that they've ever said anything like that. Um. They they don't go sailing. They have a lake, but they really they have some rowboats. Um, yeah. and they use them from time to time in summer you, you have to use it to get to the temple uh, but they don't they're not fishermen they don't go they're not explorers uh, the um, 
they do have mines. Uh, they mine the areas for predominantly sort of coal and um, starlight shards, but they don't. Um, they don't really consider themselves to be miners. You know, they ha they're like like how dwarves are culturally like very sort of tied to that. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, the others I think you could justify certain elements to the key because it's a lock. Um, yeah. The mountain because. Dunatus Voreal, the mountain that you live by and on. Um, frost. Uh, Goliaths are incredibly resilient to extreme weather and cold. Um, the tree is Idrisil, which is the tree of life, and it's part of their whole religion. Um, and the fist uh, could represent just strength. They're incredibly strong naturally. So I think those yeah. elements to you pop out based on your 17 there. You know what okay. he should have said at the beginning, outside, in the battle? What the password was. A perfect time to snap back to the battle happening outside. And you see, uh, in this very moment, Oswald behead uh, one of these creatures. And then he suddenly blinks, looks back at the tower and says... Oh shit! And then dives back into the into the fray. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you had a few things on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I bet. Um, um, what do we know of Oriel's right? Like the specifics of the right. Like, so we know there's a protection. Mm -hmm. Do we understand? Uh, the actual, the details of the protection, how it came about, what it actually is? Um, no. I mean, Cirrus has certainly got a lot more information on the specifics of the religion here and how they practice um, the uh, their faith to Dunatis, the, the mountain god, and, and the representing angel, Voriel. Um, but Voriel's right is is pretty vague, I think, even to you, Cirrus. There are lots of mini rites. You've been through a few of them. Um, yeah. Voriel's rite is is most likely just representative of the general protection aura uh, that Voriel provides, which is essentially that this is an unlivable landscape and it's an absolutely brutal Arctic area. Um, however, the area around where the angels seated is protected from that condition and so it becomes quite a livable and hospitable place and that's where they built their town around this lake around this temple and around the angel so um yeah voreal's right is is probably a general term for the sort of protective aura that the the angel provides hear me out how about Frost. No, never mind. How about all the way left to the mountain for Vorio, then mm -hmm. to the uh, to the frost for Vorio's right, all the snow and that stuff, and then turn it right back to the key to unlock it, perhaps. Yeah, let's let's try that. Um, yeah, I think we give that a try. Yeah, you uh, you try it. Um, you feel. I think um, that the first one was correct as you hear a quiet like click as you turn it to the mountain um, then you go to frost did you say right mm -hmm. not sure whether it clicks or not um, back to the key doesn't open okay well, well we can be certain then there is right that we're getting somewhere, right? I've done my job, and I again lean on the wall. You vanish into the darkness. <laughs> right, drow, this... whatever that thing is that they can just become. It might be wood elves, actually. They just become the area. Shadow mill. Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> With this lion symbol, like to us, it looks like a lion. What does that look like to the, the characters? Uh, a lion. I think a lion is a, is a pretty famous animal here as well. Um, I, I like to think that in D&D &D, there are 
you know how I, I, I've never actually seen a lion I don't think but I know exactly what a lion is um, that would be the case for most basic creatures for you guys as well obviously you're in a sort of iron age um, there isn't there isn't it's not very technologically advanced in this world um, but um, lions and and certain creatures even like owl bears you can factor in a lot of the mythical creatures as well dragons and stuff you would know what a lion is i think so there would be certain animals and certain creatures that i think it's worth questioning whether you would know but i think it would be pretty obvious that it's a lion uh, to you I, I i think especially you you'd have a more of an idea for all i know where you're from there are lions there as well to be honest so perhaps we tried mountain lion mountain we could but it's left left right isn't it so it would be yes. lion mountain then something else right lion well did you not say I mean, you found you something it, uh, when we tried mountain yes yes left left right doesn't best. change anything you can go all the way around yeah is this not simply simple. is this a spin dial i'm assuming yeah so it's like it's like a clockwise clockwise anti-clockwise sort of thing right yes, we go, uh, clockwise clockwise anti-clockwise no i don't do this in world rp sorry <laughs> oh, well i think i would um i think i would step back and maybe uh, into the shadows a bit and i'm gonna sit down cross-legged and do a bit of reading or meditating with my book for a moment as they continue on i don't have hands so i can't even manipulate this thing if i want to <laughs> right. i think um. as i'll watch them do it can, can i i suppose you, you see on the, on the right of the image here that these are tumblers mm -hmm. i would like to pay attention to those as whatever happens happens next okay um I look at I look at this and I say well Voreal protects us from frost protects us from cold right? right so um maybe we could try uh, well we could either try the, the fist which could mean strength merely strength Yggdrasil also is part of the beliefs here, so maybe if we stuck with um, beliefs and then the key. But we know that the mountain is the first one. Yes, the mountain is the first one. Okay. So, uh, I would like to try mountain, then turn it all the way to Yggdrasil, and then to the key. No, I think it's the same. Same as thing. Yeah, okay. How about Mountain Fist Key? I try that. I think, uh, give me an investigation or a perception check, uh, Tumblr Watcher. Investigation or perception, Tumblr Watcher. Yep. 17. Uh, you know, you recognize that the whatever the mechanism does, because I don't know how to crack a safe either, but you notice that the response from the mechanism on mountain fist seems to be uh, at least two correct answers in there. Ooh. But it doesn't Try unlock. the frost. Mountain fist frost. Try that. Mountain, round to fist, round to frost. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. As the uh, final uh, piece clicks into place, you hear <coughs> as if on the outside of this door there is just ice breaking. Um, and then the door sort of shudders <laughs> as if it's unlocked um, and can potentially be pushed again. All right. I try to push it um, the moment it gives me the opportunity to. Yeah. Once again, I shall need a uh, strength or athletics check from you, please. Okay. I stay against the wall. 19. Yeah. It's something 
in you allows you to push this door and you feel resistance immediately like this thing is not going to open uh, as if the outside of it is just entirely blocked like you're trying to push this door and swing it open um, you take a deep breath push and there is just a a single splinter of ice from the outside of this thing that runs and cracks along the, the outside of this door and then bang this thing <laughs> opens there is a huge gust of wind uh, frozen wind that rushes in here uh, and you are able to see immediately um, the precipice that this opens up onto it is uh, pretty obvious that you've made it to the correct place by the way there is a cliffside um, and I think as each of you steps outside the you can see down below the sounds of, of that fight continue the town and the north um, uh, the town to the north of where you are and then the watchtower which is almost directly below the precipice um, however more sort of obvious to your eyes as you walk out is that wrapped with huge thick ropes and chains is just a huge amount of stone and loose rock sitting right on the edge of the precipice of this the ropes and chains are all attached to a single rope grab and catch lever which when pulled seems as though it will in theory release the rocks and the stone and the slate and create this emergency wall that Oswald spoke of below however also as you step outside of course there is a loud screech as these undead birds fly yeah. towards you suddenly attracted by signs of movement and I am going to bring us over to our next combat here uh, again there's the precipice and you guys can place yourselves wherever you need to be in that uh, square there and roll me some initiative what is flying towards you are two giant undead ravens ahead of you uh, is the lever which simply needs to be pulled at some point are they in the air and unreachable right now they are in the air they are 30 feet up 30 feet up and they're sort of dive bombing at you right now um, how long has it been since we first uh, had the combat? Um, half an hour max. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to name this one Blue Raven and you. That's so. Uh, I mean, Green <laughs> Raven. That's so. Uh... And I'll give them their own initiatives, I think. To make it fun and mix it up. Okay. The very first one to go will be the Blue Raven as it rushes in towards where you guys are. Um, let me bring that up so that people can see the turn order in the stream. And... Uh, here we go. All right, these things can fly pretty far. Yes, they can. Let's see how, how I how I measured this for myself. Okay, it can fly to yeah, which is all it does. I think on its turn there, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's doing any crazy stuff because it is uh, uh, n not technically surprised but they are surprised to see you so it just sort of like careens off from the course it was i think you probably caught them as you opened the door just kind of circling above the battlefield um and then they catch your eye and uh you catch theirs and this thing just turns and rushes towards where you are um okay uh bringing us to thrax turn this thing is flying directly at uh you guys but it's still 30 feet okay. in the air. 
Uh, I will. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll cast magic missile. Uh, so I raise my staff, and um, from behind me, at three points, uh, these little shards of red light appear and they zoom off at the blue bird thing okay uh, and we decided that we were going to roll for damage on each one right yeah i think i just i just hit it twice i just go three i click it three times right yes it's just that in some I, I actually have no idea at this point which is the correct way to do it, but some people roll one and you take that damage for all three of them. But we thought it'd be more fun. Right. Roll the individual damage. So. Shoot off some magic missiles, uh, and I do, looks like, uh, 13 damage. Nice. Yeah, this, for want of a better word, fucks it up. The uh, missiles fly through the air, the creature is flying, and then you just. <laughs> They, you crack this thing out of the air. It almost falls, I think, for a while. As it's sort of about to dive bomb at you, its talons coming up, its beak uh, opening up. This thing just gets knocked out of flight. Um, they have uh, some of their feathers on. They have sort of like skeletal wings and, uh, and feathers that are sort of somewhat keeping them aloft. But you also get the sense that there's an element of magic here. Their eyes are kind of blue and, and almost uh, contain a, a blue light. Um, and for a moment it flickers out as if the, the fire was extinguished before it opens its mouth again, turns and sort of glides back into place. Um, you've injured it quite significantly, but it is still flying. Um, Jilden, it is your turn. Reminder, this thing is 30 feet up. Hmm. Uh, go for the lever! And I'm just going to run straight 50 foot towards the lever. Nice. Bonk. Nice. And that's uh, actually and you no are bonus still action. A wolf, right? Yes. There you go. Um, and then bonus action, I'm just going to dash and save again. Okay. So I'm almost at the lever. I'm here. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Direwolf rushes forward. We'll uh, we'll figure out some way to like bench Jilden for your Direwolf token so that you can have both in there for future. But for now, we'll just make them <laughs> both. Um, all right. The second uh, Raven is absolutely gonna uh, see you. Oh, they've got linked health, which is super annoying. Um, I will go like this. Uh, yeah, this one's going to rush down, flying. It, it sees you, it catches you flying underneath. It, it turns in that sort of like F-16 way that birds can do on a, on a dime in the air. And it is going to fly down at you. It is going to attack you with its talons. Yeah. Never been attacked by a talon before. Oh, um, all right, that is a 13 against the direwolf AC. That will miss. Yeah, yeah, it just, these, yeah. I think you sort of like are moving so quickly that it just, you feel these claws just uh, attempt to rake at the flank of your direwolf body um, and it flies off. Um, what it is going to do is fly away, however, a little bit. Uh, which... uh, goodbye, six letter words for derisory laugh. Guffaw. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it flies uh, back up another 10 feet and away 20 feet, uh, bringing us to Sia's turn. Okay, I am going to run my movement of 40 feet to the center of the field. And as I do, I am going to then throw another dart at uh, this undead raven, which I believe is in the air, right? So I can't Correct. P punch it. Okay. Yeah. Alright, in that up. case. Mm -hmm. Then I'll throw a dart at it instead. Okay. What's the range on a dart? 20? Uh, 60. Uh, 20 to 60. 
All right. D 20 means you can throw it accurately, so you don't take disadvantage. 60 is its max range. So between 20 and 60, you have disadvantage. Anything uh, over 60, you just won't hit. Understood. In which case, it does not hit. Uh, that's correct. Yes, it doesn't hit. Uh, do you want to roll again just in case it's an actual one? Uh, sure. Because <clears throat> you've got a cause. You got a little special condition. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> Natural one. Mark it down on your little tally. What? It's marked. And uh, anybody watching and listening, you'll find out what, why I'm telling him to tally that another time. <laughs> All right, Cirrus, your turn. Uh, yeah. Um, I cannot. That was unbelievable. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to also run forward uh, right here, and I am going to cast. Oh, that wasn't my th my whole turn. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh. No. What else do you want to oh. do? Uh, I wanted Finally, to sp pipes spend. <laughs> spend <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the natural one sent me. <laughs> my uh, turn was over. <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I want to spend my key point to uh, patient defense. I have no idea what that means, <laughs> but okay. It's a tool that will help us later. All right. Um, I don't know what patient defense is, but Cirrus, carry on with your turn. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast uh, Guiding Bolt um, at this blue raven um, for 11. Wow, 11 is a miss. Uh, okay. What does this look like, though? Because this is a pretty baller move, usually. Yeah, so similar to uh, my sacred flame, like nothing is like a golden yellow radiance. It's more like a, a pure white uh, sh shock almost. Um, not necessarily lightning, but closer to that, I think. Uh, and so I cast out this guiding bolt and it, it's literally just a bright sphere of white light that just... Um, tries to take this thing out yeah. yeah um yeah i think as you uh you do th is this the end of your turn actually what else do you want to do um you have a bonus action yeah i think this is the end of my turn actually yeah okay um <clears throat> yeah i think uh as you sort of uh you cast this spell there's almost like a thunder crack uh, of of noise and then um, in the distance there is a huge sound as if the earth itself cracks in two coming from further south a sort of crunching and rumbling of something moving towards the town uh, you don't have long to get this wall down it is the raven's turn and I think it's just going to go for its closest foe here as it screeches and rushes at you mm -hmm. with another talent attack an 18 versus your ac Cirrus. Ooh, that hits okay you're going to take 12 slashing damage as these Ooh. talons rake across your body uh grabbing and clawing at you and then this thing with another uh beat of its wings flies upwards and away again it is now 20 feet above where it looks to be on the map um <clears throat> Thrack. Uh, yeah, okay. I um I'll go ahead and uh cast firebolt at the uh at the raven, the blue raven. Seventeen hits. Okay. Seventeen to hit. Um yeah, so I uh cast the firebolt and it does seven damage. 
Uh, that is enough to destroy this one. You strike this one, it sort of catches a, a flame slightly. And again, you see that sort of like flame of its eye go out. The creature falls out of the air and again, the bones of the creature and the skeleton and the skull sort of fall apart before it clatters to the ground and rolls across into the stone and, and uh, snow here on the precipice. There is still another one flying around. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Uh, I'll move 30 feet. So, yes, I'm done now, though. Okay. Uh, Jilden, your turn. Bye. All right. Bye, um, I'm going to move next to the lever and assess it. Can I do something with it? What's it looking like? Uh, yep, this is a classic video game lever. Uh, it is a big... Uh, looking thing the all of the ropes are attached to this thing um, uh, in such a way that if you pull that lever um, sort of 90 degrees anti-clockwise uh, towards you it will release the catch of the uh, the netting and the chains and it will release the rocks uh, the lever itself is enormous and it's clearly designed for a very big strong goliath to pull it uh, but that is essentially all it is, just a thing that you need to pull towards you. Does it look frozen in any way or obstructed? <sighs> no, it looks very old. Um, it looks uh, big and tough to move, but in general seems to be functioning from a, from a cursory glance. Um, well, I'd like to jump over to the other side of it and try and push it with all of my direwolfly strength. All right, give me a strength check, please. Oh, natural 23. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, uh, you start to um, push. Give me, this, give me strength. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, are you doing this with your mouth or are you like doing it like My a dog shoulder. trying to push yeah, like, a, um, a shoulder flank area? Yeah, I think, yeah, you get into the uh, into the position here and start to uh, push this lever around with your uh direwolf body um as you do so there is this horrendous uh noise that from below reaches up and suddenly there is a um a creature <laughs> Which is larger than, I think, anything any of you have ever seen. Uh, uh, this oh thing pulls itself upwards. And a hand, just as the lever lets <laughs> release of the clatch and some of the, uh, the rocks start to fall away, a gigantic hand lands on the it. rocks. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> a... <laughs> as this uh, hand um, lands. It crashes down and stops the rocks from falling. Below, the fighting sort of intensifies as the Goliaths rally to fire upon the monstrous giant. This is a frost giant. It is an enormous undead giant, which is the size of the mountain itself. Its face is not even looking at you guys. It's just resting its hand on these rocks and it brings up an enormous club and whoosh, the tower below you is immediately destroyed. The Goliath screaming out and nothing but snow and rock and carnage from below. However, up here, the hand is stopping the wall from coming down. Okay. The hand um, has entered the battle. I would. Uh, it is known like as a equip. Necro Titan, and uh, necro it has a turn titan. order. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll it now. I'd like to equip my omnidirectional mobility gear. Literally, what is happening right now is that moment that it comes up behind the wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna use a bonus action to uh, D wild shape. Okay. And I assume the pushing of the thing was my action, so that's my turn over. Yes, that was your action, yeah. Okay. Uh, the raven is still in play here. 
it is going to uh, attempt to attack you once again as it flies <laughs> down with its talons coming out. A 19 <laughs> against your de-wild shaped uh, uh, oh, yeah, that'll hurt. body. As you take seven slashing damage, the claws raking across your significant shell, but also grabbing purchase on some fleshy parts and tearing uh, a wound across you as it flies past suddenly. Uh, and I think this thing is going to fly over here now. Um, time for the hand. Now the hand of the Necro Titan has multi-attack. Uh, the first thing it's going to do is try and smack Jildan, because you're so close to it. Let's see. A nine. Uh -oh. There <laughs> is a... As the, the hand kind of like bats at you, some of the rocks start falling and then it stabilizes itself again, stopping them from uh, rocking. As you uh, somehow... I guess maybe you just become a rock for a moment there as it uh, smacks at you. I scoop into my shell just... <laughs> yeah. And just a spinning like a little. <laughs> yeah. Like a Mario thing when they get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, then it is going to do a slam attack as the fist comes down. <laughs> Each creature within 150 feet of the hand must Whoa. make a DC 14 strength saving throw or take 1d10 force damage and be knocked prone. DC 14 strength saving throw. Strength saves, please. Oh. This is from all of us. Everyone, yes. yes. Okay. It's everything. everything on the ground within... Uh, oh, no, actually, you know what else? It isn't everything on the ground. I remember planning this now. Uh, the, the raven is also uh, potentially going to get caught in this because it's force. It is going to get caught. And also, I think that destroys it. Yep. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Because this is force damage. What's happening is that the concussive wave is what is causing the damage here and, and, right. and uh, striking everything. As it hits the ground, you can feel bits of the mountain above you loosening and running down. Um, the sort of precipice that you're on does have a slight overhang from the mountain above you, and there are rocks landing on the area. Uh, the giant raven is destroyed by this concussive blast as it... Uh, wrecks everything in sight. Now, Cirrus and uh, Jildan, mm -hmm. you are prone and you take <gasps> seven force damage as you are pushed over by this thing. Thwack and Seer just kind of holding still as this uh, concussive wave rocks the area. Chunks of the mountainside falling down into the battle below as um, more of the hordes of these uh, zombified lizard folk and creatures rush into a fray of uh, battle with the Goliath. And it is Seer's turn. <sighs> what do I do here? I'm going to, just for my sake, roll a wisdom save. I rolled an eight, so I'm going to do something foolish, I guess. And I am going to use my full movement, which is 80, if I use Step of the Wind to uh, uh, basically burn a key point, uh, you know, to use that as my bonus action to get there as a dash so i have my action now um i think i am going to smack the hand with my you know with close to the children i'll smack the hand with my water staff okay give me an attack roll all right uh let's see there we go <laughs> an eight an eight is not enough to uh to damage this creature. I think you hit it. It's not hard to hit. Uh, but you recognize now that this this thing is undead. This was once a, probably just a normal frost giant. I don't know what you guys know about giants in this setting. Probably nothing. Um, but in general, the giants are very giant, like Attack on Titan sized things. Um, and this one is... Uh, uh, still covered in elements of flesh that seem to have sort of become leathery with death and then in undeath while it's still alive and moving around it still has elements of frost and ice and this sort of um, leather uh, skin that was probably once you know, soft from moisture but is now you know it's probably been dead for a good long while 
um, the areas of the hand and the fingers that are covered in skin still are like hitting the mountain itself and I think yeah you recognize that as you strike and uh, doesn't seem to even affect this thing at all okay that is my turn okay Cirrus you are prone yes um I would like to become not prone if possible. I'd like to stand up. Yep, that will cost you half of your total possible movement that you do. Okay. Um, uh, and then I would like to, just for the math, so that would cost me 15. So I would like to use dash to run forward. So would the dash count for my current speed because I, I think... was not prone? that yes i think it's like whatever the maximum you do is halved for this round okay i might cool. be wrong chat has one second to save you <laughs> before you move wax steven wax steven save us i summon you I your summon power do summoning from a pokeball <laughs> Um, nope. Okay. I think it makes I think it makes sense to me that dashing would have the same like if my movement speed is half. Uh, I mean I can Google it. I wish Maya would do it, but <laughs> it's okay. uh, why do you think I you're in this campaign, Maya? I should have also Googled it. <laughs> I could have also supposed to be Googling everything for me. <laughs> I've got gloves on, I can't, can't help you. <laughs> Alright, um, we're gonna go with... Uh, yeah, me too, I have gloves on. Yeah. So, so what, calculate your total movement, including the dash, and halve it. That's, that's what I think it is. Okay, okay, cool. Um, and if I'm wrong, well, it's only the fate of the world in the balance, so... It's okay, so no big deal. Mm -hmm, no big deal, okay. Thank you, I'm gonna run forward 30. Yeah. Um... Then I will. <sighs> okay. Then I'm gonna uh, cast. I'm gonna try guiding bolt on the hand again. Okay. Whoa, twenty-three. Twenty-three is a hit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to cast that at level two, actually. So, um, a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, radiant damage. Six. Radiant damage means it's holy damage, basically. All right, oh, so really? you've done 20, holy damage bad for that thing. Twenty-three. Um. Looking at it, you would hope so. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do hope so. Um, and while this does seem to do a lot of damage and tear through and rend through some of the, uh, the flesh, um, the fact that it's radiant doesn't actually seem to have any additional any. effect. Okay. Um, okay. Oh. Uh... After that, I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself as a bonus action. All right, I think you can move the extra on dash, is what I'm getting from chat. It's not the total. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you want to move an extra, what, 15 feet? 15. I'll, yeah, I'll take that 15, because I think it uh, I think it would yeah. be good. Thank you. Oh, I um, was preoccupied doing the original question, but yeah, 15. Okay, right. Then I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. Level 1 cast. Take 7. 7 heal. Thank okay, you. crack. Right. I will... Uh, I will move. 30, 30 feet. Right. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Uh, 30 feet and then, um, what am I now? Oh, 
I will uh, use my dash to move an additional 30 feet. And then I'm going to uh, do Tick on him. Tick on absolutely him. nothing else. <laughs> yeah. I'll do nothing. Actually, no, I'll cast uh, Expeditious Retreat as a bonus action. Okay. You don't have cantrips? Uh, isn't it a dash a bonus? I do. Oh, no, never mind. Not me. Dash <laughs> okay. is not. Oh, you dash. Alright, alright, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm distracted. Right. Now it's a bonus action because I used expeditious retreat. Okay, Thank yes, you, yes, Blair. yes, yes. All right, yeah, yeah, I see. Yes, you're welcome. That's my <laughs> turn. I'm done. Okay. Jilden. Okay, um, I see on this picture that he has various rings and jewelries on. Is that just for flavor or would he actually have various metallic adornments? No, he has these adornments. huge, uh, ginormous metallic rings on these huge fingers and Sick. gigantic metallic bracelets um uh, then i will cast heat metal upon one of these Ooh. rings upon his fingers um so let me just remind myself uh any creature in physical contact with the object takes 2d8 fire damage when i cast it i don't think is there a save for it no i think it's just flat damage uh let me post it. There you go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can keep doing it. Uh, if the creature is holding or wearing the object, it must succeed on a con saving throw. Oh, there the you object. go. Sorry. Con save. I think it still takes the full damage. It's just that whether right. it drops the object, actually. So. Let's just lop a finger off. <laughs> so I'll do the con save for you regardless. I don't think it can drop it, but. A nine, so it fails. It's only four fire damage. Four fire damage. Um, it can't drop the ring, but it does have disadvantage on its next attack, apparently. Mm -hmm. If I'm reading that correctly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's take that, you big bastard! <laughs> yeah, one I'm of like, these rings just... just kind of his finger. <laughs> yeah, just, it does that glowing hot red thing. Um, the creature sort of does respond like it does that, like, it turns and its hand moves in one direction and in, in sort of a reflexive move I think it's just going to attempt to uh, bat away at you let's see one for Maya and two for Leah for Jilden two Jilden you are going to be uh, potentially subjected to this on a nine I'm guessing it's a miss as again it sort of reflexively responds to the heat from the ring and the uh yeah you're able to sort of turtle up just in time and avoid being struck by it however once again it is going to bring up its hand and each uh each of you needs to make okay. a strength save Jildan's up Cirrus you're back on the ground Thrak hits the ground uh, Sia hits the ground and you three uh, take 10 force damage as this concussive blast oh. Strike Actually, all of you, I'm gonna pushing you to the ground. Yep. Do some bullshit. Okay. Um, as I'm about to fall, I fall and hit the ground, and then um, I sort of focus uh, my energy, and in front of me a clock uh, appears, and it starts uh, ticking, <laughs> and then it starts ticking backwards, and I spring back to my feet and i get to uh everything sort of goes back in time for me about uh five seconds and i get to uh roll again okay cool <laughs> <laughs> and i do worse so <laughs> the second time round, that whole uh, thing happens and then he just falls back yeah. over. <laughs> and then uh, I just fall over and actually this time it's worse and I'd like to take a point of damage and I slam <laughs> my face into the ice. All right, well, <laughs> you take 11 points of damage. Uh, the other two take 10 oh, okay. points of damage uh, from this and all three of you are Excellent. on the uh, ground. Sia, it's your turn. I use my... Half my speed to get up, so now my total speed is 20. Uh, before I continue, it's important to ask. So this creature, this Necrotitan, mm -hmm. um, is... Uh, uh, 
Are all the fingers, I mean, are they counted as individual fingers or is it just one entity? The hand is one entity. Okay, all right. Yeah. If you want to okay. get funky with doing something with one of the fingers, then it might, uh, you know, you can do anything. I would anything. like to get funky with a finger. Yeah, me mechanically, <laughs> it's just yeah, tickle him. It's just a hand. Uh, but yeah, potentially you can you can always think outside the box and it will, okay. you know, whatever happens. All right, in which case I will try and swing down on the nearest finger to me uh, with my quarter staff. Uh, with a 16 to hit. 16 does hit. Okay, and uh, with that, I have the uh, the crusher feet. Whenever I deal blunt damage, I can once per turn uh, move something, uh, well, move the, the creature I'm hitting uh, five feet away from me. So by creature, I was hoping finger, and so by trying to move the finger away from the rubble that that, that particular finger is on. Okay. <laughs> I think that that's fair to say that you do that. Did you say you add an extra thing in there or you're just hitting it? I'm just damage? hitting it to move. Yeah, I'm hitting it with damage. Uh, okay. Let me roll the damage, sorry. Uh, so six points of bludgeoning damage. And as I do that, the finger shifts five feet. Yeah, okay. And you know what else I'm going to do? Um, do you mm -hmm. have like some sort of monk DC? Uh, you monk use? DC. Yeah. Like, do um, you, you have a DC for anything as a... Because uh, some, I know some classes have different DCs. I don't have a spell save DC or anything like that, no. All right. Um, but uh, let's set it to wisdom. Okay. And tell me what your uh, spell save DC would be. Um. Hmm. Okay. You can just go on your spell page and set it to wisdom, and it will give you an answer. By the way, rather than figuring it out. Okay, spell page. Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a spell casting ability, none. I can change it to wisdom. Yep. Uh, 12. 12, okay. I'm going to roll a con save for this giant. Uh, and if it rolls under a 12, something significant might happen, which it does, a 7. By the way, this giant has a plus 4 to its con save, so. Okay. Um, I think what happens here is essentially you cause... Uh, this giant to react because I think you it's already reacting to the fact that the ring is is burning its hand then you sort of force its hand backwards or its finger backward um, and at this point it takes its hand off of the rocks there is enough for this thing to lift this ginormous hand uh, upwards oh. And suddenly, crashing down the mountainside, a huge cascade of snow and rocks following in their wake as these rocks crumble and rush across the landscape below. You... <laughs> see this like creature step away from the mountain the entire time you were fighting it it didn't even look at you um you're able to watch as these these rocks rush uh in in a, a sort of loose wall eventually crashing into the lake itself at the western edge of the town limits it appears to have worked it's rudimentary but a wall nonetheless this sort of thin veil between the town on one side and the horde of creatures on the other but it is something uh what do you guys do immediately after that with creatures of that size on their side i don't think that is going to have done much I... well not our problem i say we go problem. back and have a bowl of stew if the stew still exists. Hmm. We need to assess the situation, I believe. Let us, uh, we look over and, um, uh, do we, can we tell if it stopped the onslaught of the horde of undead creatures? How's uh, the town doing? Can we see that from here? From up here, it looks as if maybe. You'd probably have to go down. Okay. 
Uh, there's also an enormous amount of debris that's like lifting up and creating a... The tower has place. been crushed, correct? There's no way back out. That's well, right. the top of the um, tower was destroyed. I mean, it, it's possible you can still get out through the bottom. Okay. The Necro Titan, it stopped. Uh, it just stopped. And it was looking at something the whole time, right? It was, yeah, just sort of like uh, attacking the people below. Okay. Rather okay, than okay. you four, just the, the right. hordes of, of creatures below and Goliaths. There wasn't a significant target that he was focusing on. Okay. Right. Um, are, are there more of them or just the one? Can I see in the distance? Give me a perception check. Okay. Twenty. It's um. It's first of all, it's very hard to see. There is a sort yeah. of icy mist, and it's nighttime. Um, the only light really is coming from the town, and some of the fires lit around where the the watchtower was. Um, the creature, the Necro Titan, is actually moving away right now. Um, its feet. <laughs> moving away from the area it seems to be the only one but you can see on the ground on the other side of the wall that there are other giants um where the necro titan is absolutely enormous these are m more traditional looking giants imagine if you've seen game of thrones they had those giants with the white walkers those ones yeah they're, they're still very okay. tall like the size of a house um yeah, yeah. but there are a few of those littered in there that looked like they were about to, like they were close enough to the wall as it came down that you probably okay. stopped them um, just by bringing this wall down in time. But in terms of Necro Titan, it seems to be just the one. And it's sort okay. of moving away right now. I think I turn to Cirrus and I say, well, if Voreal's going to do anything now, well, now's the time to do it. Um, I... Can I see Boreal from where we're standing? I don't think so. Um, no? Okay. I, it, it, it's... Pretty far away. Um, yeah, the, okay. The town is on the... So there's a... The town is on a, a lake. The lake is pretty huge. Um, the town is on one side of it. And at the center of it is where Voreal is. Um, yeah. but it's just too dark. It's too far away and too dark. Okay. Can I just catch my breath for a moment? I'd like to take a short rest if we can. Yeah, you, um, what I'll give you is that you are safe to come down out of the mountain. And by the time you sort of get to the next point, it will have, will have been short rest uh, time, so an hour or so. Um, and we're going to say that that's what happens, I think, as you uh, proceed down the uh, mountain um, you do realize that part of this tower has been destroyed and as you walk through some of the debris you're able to still get out but the tower itself is clearly wrecked predominantly the top half of the tower has just been destroyed it was sort of like it's like hitting a golf ball off of the tee for this uh, necro titan um, and you have to move through some debris but you're able to get back outside um, Ugh, this place is a mess. Well, what do you think happened here? I think we saw what happened here. Absolutely oblivious, by the way. Just walking around like, ah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, um, the loose stone wall is actually enormous. It's much larger than it appeared from the top of the mountain. Um, it seems to have pulled a great deal of the mountain down with it as it fell. So the shale and rock sealing off the town from the wilderness on the other side and there's a brief lull in the fighting um, after this wall came down the necro titan retreated back into the mist of the cold and the night most of the undead seem to have sort of followed um, with those that are on this side of the wall mopped up by the townsfolk and the fighters of the watch Oswald regroups with his men um, and I think in this time you're also able to sit to one side patch yourselves up um, you can do uh, anything you regain on a short rest you get back you get uh, you can roll hit dice um, and uh, yeah so a, a loose hour-ish of time passes 
as Oswald moves around and he's moving all the way up and down There's, so the the space between where the, the um, eastern watchtower is and the lake itself is, is pretty significant so he moves up and down that um, checking with his men and the townsfolk and stuff um, after some time he comes to you and, and he requests that you go and find Thors, the head cleric um, who sort of heads up the relationship between the angel Voreal and the council who run the town of Moon here um, and I think he's sort of standing there he's kind of cut up and bruised up and, and, and uh, you know most people are looking pretty battered there are a few uh, dead and he says uh, first of all I think he gives for the first time in, in all the time you've maybe known him he doesn't give you each a look of disdain um, there's, it, it's not it's not like he gives you a smile or a warm look but he doesn't give you a look of you know mild disdain or detest um, I'm still generally... giving him that look though okay. it was mutual yeah um, he says Thors I have heard nothing from him all week now that I come to think of it please find him we need him more than anyone for this foe. Yes, of course. Um, he didn't say anything to you the last time you saw him. Thor's often says many things, but most of it is cryptic. I don't deal in runes and prophecies. I deal in blood. That is all. Prophecies? Did he mention one? Yes. We have known something was coming. Myself, Thors, Hard, a few of the council members. Then you didn't think to tell any of us? We did not know what it would be. And you four specifically I was told to tell nothing at all oh great that makes what me feel f- amazing fuck? well um if he knew that there was a prophecy he he would have taken action he would be he would be doing what he believed to be right to We help. have taken action. We have set you to task, week in and week out. Training you for this. That's what that was. Chores. <clears throat> er- errands. Chores, to be sure. That was your training. It has made you stronger now. Look how well you built a wall. I think I should. Where is Dodd? I do not know where Hard is. He has been gone for some time, as he is wont to do. Much like Thor's he deals in ways that I simply do not understand. What, um, how often does Thor's visit Boreal? Would it be reasonable for me to think that that's where he went? He's there more than anyone, and he's there yes. more than he's at his house, or he's at, yeah. you know, the shrine grounds or anything like that. Yeah, he spends a, a, a significant amount of time with the angel. We must start with Boreal. If he knew that something was coming, he would um, commune, ask for guidance. Uh, He would be in constant communication. He would not leave. He would not leave us. Hey, 
it looks like he already has. That would be curious indeed if he had left. Don't get your hopes up. Hmm. Would not leave us. Okay. Um. <clears throat> where do you go? To the temple? Yeah, I think that's where I would suggest we head. Unless always, anyone had an argument. When I uh, need heart or something, how do I usually find him? You don't. He finds you. Is the, the short answer. He. I don't think he has literally ever responded to a summons from you, or even if you've been like, "Hey, do you want something to eat?" You know, he's he's just not that way inclined. He is very sort of alien in the way that he thinks and i think although you will have got to know him over the years he's still just a complete mystery and he vanishes for huge periods of time i think you've you've probably spent more time alone than with him even while studying directly underneath him at the wizard's tower yeah all right oh uh, yeah i'll go with him then i'll, I'll go to the the uh, angel okay yeah i think um you sort of pack up a few things you know brush yourselves off and head back in towards the um the the town itself um for only a few months of the year the water of the great lake that this town sits aside is unfrozen um and travel to and from the temple of dunatis during the summer simply must be made by boat so i think you and and there's plenty of them um rowboats and canoes the the lake is known as the lake of serenity or the lake of tranquility so it's always sitting very still it's very easy to get to and fro um and uh i think yeah cirrus you just lead them to uh a rowboat everybody gets in out of curiosity who would be the person who actually rows the rowboat out of the group just so i have a picture in my head absolutely not me <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel like i would probably offer to do it just to like yeah i wouldn't as, say as no. a cleric as a cleric here i would feel it would be my duty to do the the gruntiest tasks uh, along the way yeah i just step into the boat and go to the bow and lie down with my arms behind my head i watch my bag of nuts i immediately try to stop her from grabbing my nuts <laughs> Yep. My nut bag. <laughs> I rolled a 16. Not the nut bag again. <laughs> oh, she's actually uh, done it. You're, you're going to have to... Is, what's, the, what's the DC on that? No. Um, I think it would just Do be I a contested, uh, contested roll. Um, so you, yeah. just, you can roll your own dexterity-based check back. I do dexterity or can I do perception? <laughs> you'd be quite used to this by now so whichever one you'd prefer yeah yeah i think, yeah, I think you, yeah yeah go for whichever I've, one. I've, I've told you i'm getting my bag of nuts so you know what to expect yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay and now um, well in that on. case i'd like to use oh yeah perception all right oh yeah you uh yeah. Yeah. Time you recorded history he finally gets it he grabs <laughs> he grabs strikes nuts in this boat <laughs> As uh, <laughs> yes, the fortuitous day indeed. I never thought I'd live to see the day. It's been a year, has it not? It's been a year. It's been a year to grab my yeah, nuts. Yeah, and you've even trained together for a lot of time. Yeah. In, in at last, the first training has been successful, yeah. Fru fruitful, or not for <laughs> truly is the end oh, of the world. No. Perhaps the training was good after all. Uh, off the track, apparently. Yeah, you uh, you clamber into the boat and, and head across the lake and there's a sort of sudden quiet and chill uh, to the night settling on you as the boat makes its steady way across the water. The tranquil lake lapping at the wood of the boat for some time until eventually the temple itself comes into view. Um, I don't know if all of you will have been to this temple but uh, that would be up to you to sort of figure out in your own minds. Um, but this thing is uh, huge. Um, from the from the distance and during the day, it is uh, 
a crazy sight at the center of this huge lake is this miniature mountain range um and uh at the center of that miniature mountain range is this enormous stone uh temple built around the natural mountain um and along this uh temple are these huge glyphs that glow a sort of steady orange twinkling in the night sky like oddly shaped stars and the temple is built around the mountain and the mountain is the angel voreal the creature that keeps this town protected from the harsh and unforgiving arctic lands beyond its influence and this temple is often empty uh, but especially so tonight there's nobody at the foot of the mountain there are no other boats except one and one man is sat naked at the foot of the stairway that leads up into the temple facing away from you uh, on his knees a small and thin goliath thaws his body is a sort of orchestra of scarification and lattice work tattoos and his gray haired beard flows back across his shoulders in the timid breeze as you approach he doesn't stand he doesn't turn he simply begins to speak and says the towns the people the animals even the angels are all gone this wave of death has been moving towards us for a full cycle a full year it has even destroyed the plants I do not despair, child. All hope is not lost. There must be more of us alive out there. There has to be a way to stop this. Last summer, when I witnessed the Aurora, the omen of dark days, I prepared a group to travel out to stop it. Our strongest, myself, Hard the Wizard, Oswald, and Wynne, our alchemist. But the angel groaned. In communion, it convinced me this would end in failure. What we are witnessing, what begun a year past, is the end of the world. In our tongue, Ragnarok. But the prophecy is wrong. This is not how it is supposed to be. The prophecy of Ragnarok is wrong. Something about all of this is wrong. This is no Ragnarok as it was foretold. It's too early. Still. Voriel showed me four faces. Against all odds, four strangers stand before me. It seems that through Divine understanding only, you are bonded. Bonded beyond surface things. Bonded at the soul. More even than blood. Yet, you are a family. Cut it. You may even know this bond in... In many tongues. Across the world over. It is known as Cura. It is 
but due to this bond that you are shielded from the dark eyes of whatever has caused this swift death of our world. And it is due to this bond that you are our only hope. He stands up slowly and finally turns to you, the old Goliath's body swaying as if he has not eaten or slept for days. Clasp one another's hands, quickly now. Time is a luxury we can no longer enjoy. Hold still. Must I? Oh. Before uh, Judin or Seer can object, I quickly reach out and grab both of their hands. <laughs> Oh, thank you, I was cold. I'll take Sears hand and Sears's hand and pat her on the hand. You may notice now that one of my hands is concealed, so uh, it's small and deformed. Um, I pull back my cloak and reveal it. Eh. <clears throat> and I sort of turn away and, and sort of hold it anyway. <laughs> you will I feel now the power. Not just of Oriel, but of all the angels, of all the gods they represent. The great stream that binds us and them flows through you. It connects you to them. If they are the angels of our gods, then you are the warriors of our angels, our Aspara, the spoken Valkyrie, perhaps. Look now. It manifests. There's a slight heat sensation as a symbol appears upon your skin. Eh. It looks a little something like this. Which you cannot see on the dark mode. <laughs> hey, that'll do. Uh, you, um... Each have this symbol somewhere upon your body. But it's up to you to tell me where on your body it appears. Right on my throat. Nice. Um, it appears on my right shoulder. It is on my bare chest. Ah, took my. It's also on my chest, so. Yeah, uh, it, it it looks like a combination of a, a sort of dark tattoo and a scar, maybe a burn, as it appears. He continues to speak, but turns away from you again, looking back at the angel for a moment. You may each have been born outsiders, but you are one of us now. No matter who you are, where you come from, what you look like, our differences disappear when faced with death. He turns around and he's smiling for the first time. He rests his eyes for a little longer on Jildan than anyone else after saying that. And then he says, Chosen Cura, heed me now. This next task, I beseech you. There is another warrior out there 
one who may just buy us the time we need. In this world, angels live among us. Many great invincible beings of immeasurable power, a bridge between us and the gods. These creatures are not as you might imagine them. While some are human-like in their appearance, most are alien. A sitting mountain, a giant boar, a hovering sphere. Each of the angels provides a powerful boon to the surrounding area and its inhabitants. They do not speak to us. They do not move. We built our world around them. They shaped our cultures. We rely on them. Until something dark came along. Now, one by one, the angels have been slain. The people of the lands around them, slaughtered. A wave of death is spreading across our world. Only a few places remain as a final bastion of life. Only a few against an endless horde of oblivion. And within these few, a single band of unlikely heroes, bound by forces beyond their understanding. In this world, there is only a single word that describes their soul-bound connection. <laughs>